Brianna, as we anticipate more business openings around the state, it is the hope of some community leaders that the rebuilding of our economy includes an opportunity to address inequalities in the workplace and elsewhere. That's the aim of a blueprint put together by the city of Newark and one of its largest employers, Prudential Financial. Prudential's Latha Reddy says it's a moral imperative that businesses adopt inclusion. It is a message that perhaps resonates even more strongly today after a weekend of demonstrations across this country. We're seeing uh, people fighting for the fundamental right of equity, right? The opportunity to have a level playing field and to have the same uh, chances to pursue what's best for themselves and their family as anybody else, regardless of zip code, regardless of race, regardless of any uh, other factors. And so there's going to be a lot more work and a lot more attention that needs to be focused on this notion of inclusive growth and centering racial equity in those conversations. Meantime, Kenneth Frazier, the CEO of Kenilworth-based Merck, told CNBC that joblessness leads to hopelessness, and that's what we see in the streets. He said business leaders can be a unifying force and create jobs and opportunities. In Trenton, an assembly committee has approved a bill that would grant Governor Murphy emergency borrowing powers. NJ Spotlight's John Reitmeyer says lawmakers had to weigh the potential impact to taxpayers. There are a lot of different ways this could impact the average New Jersey taxpayer. In the short term, it might be that services aren't reduced as, as much as quickly uh, or that tax hikes aren't as dramatic immediately. But it may also mean that over the long term, taxes might have to go up that otherwise would have been able to be stable because there are long-term bonds that now have to be paid down. You can read more about this on njspotlight.com. Eli Lilly today announced the first human trial of an antibody therapy against COVID-19. If it is successful, a treatment could be available as early as this fall. And an economic report out today showed manufacturing activity in the U.S. slid to an 11-year low in May. It's another sign of how badly the economy is contracting due to COVID-19. Turning to Wall Street, here's a look at the trading day. I'm Rhonda Shapler, and those are your top business stories. Thank you.